Yo guys, what's up and welcome back to you, Nico Dev. And today I'm so excited to show you a new game that I've been developing. So why am I developing a new game now? Well, summer is just around the corner, so I realized I have a lot of free time and I want to spend it creating a cool game that you guys can play. So what is this game all about, you might think? Now, now look at this image, okay? What do you think this is all about? Well, if you have been following me on Twitter or on Discord, you probably already know about this image. But the beauty of this is that this game is going to be a tactical uh, 2D tile style game. So basically, something along the lines of chess or checkers, but something that I created. So it's going to be pretty fun. So today I'm going to show you how the main game works at this point. I didn't do much, okay, I just did the main logic of the game, and then I'm going to show you a little bit how I did it, and finally, I will talk about what I want this game to become, and you guys are really excited for this, okay, just take some popcorn, eat something while watching this video, but please, just have fun. Alright, so, first of all, we have this board, okay, and we have all of these pieces, as you can see, we can move the different pieces, okay, all around, okay. So basically, each piece can move uh, one step in any direction it wants. But there are a bunch of different pieces. As you can see, right now it's Blue's turn. And in fact, if I try to move one of the pieces, it's going to be Red's turn. So in the future, this is going to be an online game. So you will be able to play online. And you may say, Nico, how are you going to handle matchmaking? So basically... Um, pair two players together so that they can play together. Now, usually I would use um, Unity's matchmaker. Thing is, Unity is changing their matchmaker uh, to make it better, okay? But the thing is, if I use that one, in two years I will uh, have to change it. So I want to challenge myself to create my own matchmaker. Basically, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna uh, store all of the matches in a database and I'm gonna pair the players using a database so I'm gonna create something on my own and that is gonna be a really good challenge and at the same time I'm going to be using the Firebase database to do that because you know um, I made a lot of tutorials uh, uh, in Firebase and I'm becoming uh, kinda you know more expert at it um, because I made all of those tutorials and you know I read about it so you know it's gonna be pretty fun but as of right now you can only play um, on the same computer we could say so as you can see red is making a move and now blue is making a move but I'm gonna change this later and really soon I, I, I plan to do it next week um, as you can see uh, we have different kinds of pieces and I'm gonna explain to them uh, to you the different pieces right now we have the sword piece okay the sword piece can move normally okay and it can, um, it can literally kill anything, okay? As you can see, right now there are two sword pieces colliding. If we click on this, we can kill the red one. Boom. And th this red one can kill us, okay? But now here is the thing. The blue... Uh, whoops, it's not my turn. The blue thing can kill anything, okay? The blue sword can kill anything but the bomb, okay? It cannot kill this little bomb icon right here. And this is gonna be important later. But le le for now, let's just go here, okay? Le let's just do this. So this is the sword piece. Now, the beauty of this is that each piece, except for the king, has a special ability, okay? And you can trigger the special ability by double-clicking. Now, what's the sword's special ability? The sword's special ability is BAM, creating a black hole. So basically uh, the sword will implode in itself and as you can see nothing can pass over this black hole. So it's a cool way to like um, uh, uh, block the path. If you know the sword is gonna get killed anyway, you can basically block the path so nobody can pass there. So it's a really good um, tactic that you could use. So this is the, everything about the swordsman. Uh, or the sword pawn, as I used to call it. Now let's talk about this one, okay? This one is also pretty cool, okay? This one moves normally, like all of the other ones, but as you can see, this is the shield tile. It cannot kill anything, it's completely passive, but it, can't, it can get killed, so you have to be careful. But here's the thing, if a sword or anything is nearby it, and this guy double clicks, as you can see, this sword is going to become immune, so it's gonna be protected for one turn. So I can do this, and now this sword is completely protected, it cannot be attacked. 
So, you know, that's also pretty cool. That's the, uh, the special ability of the sealed, the shield. So, the tactic that you have to use is to actually go and attack, to, uh, and, sorry, and attack with your sword and your shield at the same time. So, the shield can protect the sword and the sword can attack, but at the same time you have to be careful and try to protect your shield because it can easily be attacked. So, you know, a, a, a lot of cool strategies that you can do. I, I didn't play test this game, so it might be a little bit of um, an unbalanced games, uh, game, but I'm gonna actually improve all of the different strategies and different stuff. Right now I'm only showcasing the main mechanics. Okay, so then we have this bomb tile, okay, so what is this bomb tile doing, okay? This bomb tile moves normally, and now here is the thing, the bomb tile cannot be killed by anything. It's literally completely immune to every, all attacks. So as you can see, it cannot even be killed by swords. But the bomb tile is a crazy tile, okay? First of all, I didn't explain this thing. As you can see, each time um, any tile walks on any grey area, the grey area will become blue, okay? Now, the swordsman can walk on any terrain, but the shield and the bomb cannot walk on the different team's terrain. So I'm gonna show you uh, right now, this shield can only move to here, it cannot move to here. But this sword can move to here, because as you can see, it's the different color terrain. So that's a thing, but now let's pretend we did something like, okay, what is the bomb, okay, let's do this, let's occupy the terrain, then we, we move this back, okay. Now let's pretend we are in this kind of situation right here, okay, we have this bomb, that it, it's, in the, it's in the middle of everything, okay. What do we do with this bomb? Well, this bomb has a special ability, this bomb can double click, and once it double clicks, boom, it explodes, all of the blocks... Um, nearby the bomb will become red and any 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 team that is uh, you know around will get destroyed so you know this is really cool so the bomb uh, has a really powerful ability but if you use it wrong you can make a really really bad move okay then there is the king that just moves normally and I think it can kill anything didn't double check that I forgot uh, to make its physics so probably yes uh, and naturally if the king dies it's game over. I didn't program that yet though, so uh, nothing happens if the king dies. But now I didn't explain one thing. You may say, Nico, why is there a sword here? Didn't we kill everything before? Well, these kind of circular blocks are actually generators. So what are generators are for? Basically, when it's your turn, the generator, if it's red, it will start generating a swordsman. So as you can see now, uh, this is empty, if we do this, a swordman will generate, okay? But now here is the thing, so here is the thing, you have to conquest the grey generators. So if we bring a bomb here, okay, and now here more things are spawning, and then we go back, as you can see, um, this generator is not spawning anything, even if it's blue. Why is he not spawning everything, anything? Because an enemy is nearby. As you can see, this sword is nearby the generator, so the generator will be afraid and will not spawn. But if we move this thing uh, further behind, as you can see, a new sword will generate. And swords will keep on generating... Uh, every move, so you know, it's gonna be crazy. Now, I plan on nerfing this and make it so the generator can only work five times and then it becomes a normal block uh, or a normal tile because right now it's way too OP and games literally never end. So that's a thing I plan to do. And basically this is all for the gameplay. This is all the gameplay we are having right now. But you may think, Nico, this board is a little bit boring, okay? It's too small. Well, I plan on ending an editor, okay? Basically, you will be able to create your own games, meaning your own boards in the different formations of, uh, of tiles in every board. And, you know, it's gonna be highly customizable, it's gonna be really cool, and also you will be able to upload your boards to the internet so other people can play your boards and rate them. Um, and also, one last thing, you naturally, uh, but we're gonna do this further in the end of the game, you will be able to have an account and with all of your wins and losses, and you're gonna have like a, a, a score, it's gonna be really cool. So I'm really excited for this game and I'm really looking forward to it being, you know, something that people enjoy and play. And uh, naturally the gameplay has to be nerfed a lot and changed a lot, because right now it's just crazy. But at the same time, I, 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 I'm enjoying how it's coming out. Also, why didn't anything spawn here? This is confusing. Something is supposed to spawn, right? Why is nothing... Wait... 
Okay, there are still some bug and fixes. I, I, I don't, some bugs. I mean, uh, I don't know why nothing spawned here. Probably there was something around it. I forgot. Well, anyways, this is it. But now let me show you a little bit how I made this game. So naturally, like every single game that I made, I made it using Unity. So basically, um, this is the scene, as you can see. I don't know what to show you because you know it's a it's a bunch of code that I put together and it's not really that much organized. Uh, but as you can see, all of these. Um, game objects are the different tiles and as you can see they are they are colored blue and when they are colored blue they uh, it means that they are prefabs if you're not familiar with unity basically free prefab means that is something prefabricated so it's not a game object i created from scratch as you can see uh, like this a sprite a simple sprite but it's a game object that is down here and as you can see i can drag this game object right here and i create a new hexagon a new tile so what's the beauty of this is that when I will make an editor, it will be as simple as this. When the user uh, tries to create a new tile or a new board, basically these elements are gonna get, um, you know, thrown around and spawned. So it's gonna be, re I, I made this, um, you know, optimizing it already for an editor because the editor of the board is coming really soon. Okay, well, this is the code for it. Uh, there, is a, there are a bunch of classes, of course. So these are all of the scripts. Actually, only six scripts. Look at that. So we got this script that is basically all of the resources that it needs to load. So all of the different sprites and the different uh, game object it needs to have a reference to. So this is nothing really that you know that uh, that thrilling. Then basically this is the script that controls the selection. So as you can see, when we uh, when we oh whoops I messed it up. When we do this, uh, these white little things that are right there, that white outline. Uh, this is the tile selector and here is the script that controls it Then we have the possible tile class that is a script that controls every single outline So you know this will control what happens when you click on one of them where the object will move after the move um, Then we have naturally the um, uh, Where is it? Well, we have the turn handler that for some reason is not in the scripts folder Dude, you have to be inside the scripts folder don't make me mad. Okay, we have the turn handler that basically um, detects what kind of turn we are, if it's uh, the blue turn or red turn. So, you know, nothing really that fancy. And then we have uh, the main handler that basically is a reference to every single other uh, class, so for safekeeping. And then we have these other two scripts. This script controls the background, so uh, all of these little t uh, gray tiles that get colored. In fact, as you can see here, you can do the change theme function that changes the theme of the tile once, uh, I, I can say, a tile, uh, a pawn, gets over there. So, you know, this is the function that controls that. And then, this is the hexagon handler, and then finally we have the pawn handler, that, and this is the, I guess, the largest one, because it controls each and every pawn and it's gonna behave differently uh, based on the type of pawn that we have so right here we have a bomb right here we have a swordsman right here we have a protector and right here we have a king so yeah that's it this is how basically the code is structured i cannot wait to give you guys update on these games and if you enjoyed this type of video be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you are new as i said really excited for this new game and you may say nico why can't we play it already okay I'm working forward to a, a version that you can actually play. As of right now, I'm probably gonna invite some people on my Discord uh, to play test the game for me and with me. So basically, once I um, release the database, uh, so the database connection, the matchmaking system, the online making match system, then I will release the game only for a few people that I know so we can test it together. I, pr I will probably do some videos on that either here or on my main channel so you can look forward to those and if you want to be one of the guys that uh, test the game before all of the other ones you can go in the description and you will find my coding discord i would post the game there as soon as it's uh, you know a, a playable version because right now it, it's not kind of a playable version it probably has a lot of bugs i need to, i need to fix a lot of stuff but anyway guys hope you really enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and i'm gonna see you guys in the next one see ya